Welcome again to another video YouTube Nation Cricket and Fitness to the Bone and in this video we'll be discussing cricket cricket lovely cricket and to be specific we are talking about West Indies going up against England in that 4020 international and at this moment, the series is very interestingly poised. West Indies leading the series 2 0, variety of winning the first two games, and England will see where they pull off a win in the last game there. And, and that made the series now really interesting. And you know, funny about it, normally I would have won West Indies to win every game. You know, and and win every series. I still want them to win this series, but two one made the series very interesting, and that's what you want. So this fourth game now become now even more important because at West Indies gone on and win that game, will be leading the series three 0 and these two games now will be dead rubbers. And dead rubbers, I mean, in most people's books because people will old mind West Indies will go on and win all five games, and you know. And, and what you'll call that now, Blackwatch England. But as it stands at the moment, that won't happen because England have now won a game and the series is 2 1. So there's a lot of important not importance now in this for T20 International. And it was an amazing game, so that third aim in T20 International. It was a very amazing game. One of the best T20 Internationals I have watched in, such, in, in a long while. And although I was on the disappointed end of things, cricket wasn't disappointed, and that's what we want. Interesting game, and as I said, it now made the series very interesting, the boys. So in this fourth T20 International, I'm thinking about what West Indies, you know, what are their chances in this fourth T20 International. Because I still believe West Indies will go on and win this series. Before the series started, I predict West Indies to win 4-1. So I expect England at some point to win a match. And you wonder now to yourself, wonder if that's the game that they win on in the last in T20 International. I don't remember the date. I don't remember if it was Sunday or Saturday. Maybe Saturday, but don't quote me on that. England now win one, so you want if that's the only game. I won't mind it if that's the only game. I want West Indies to go on and win 4 1 because that now will make my prediction thing look very good. But England will have other ideas. And they'll be going to this fourth game now, probably with some momentum, more confident, and expecting now to square the series. West Indies will have other ideas. And as I said, I think West Indies will win this game, win the next game and go on and win the series 4-1. England, and the, by the brilliance of Harry Brook, 31 from 7 deliveries, and Phil Saul, 109 from 56 deliveries, and Dras Butler, you know, not doing that too bad in this T20 series, I think he made what, 54 of 32, and you know, they put on a very important opening stand for England, which was very pivotal in the end of England getting across the line. So, England now finding some players now who are, who are in good form, and that is good for them. West Indies, on the other hand, I still believe we are a top class T20 international team. If you look at our squad, we have good players on the bench, good players in the team, so we are a top class T20 international team. Don't make no one fool you. You know, we still don't play our best cricket as yet. In the last game, we batted so well. 222 for 6 was a very good score and that wicket. Although it was a batting wicket, it was a very good score and West Indies in the end here should have pulled it out. But some poor bowling, I believe it was some poor bowling there at the back end that cost us that game. And as I said, poor bowling, I'm going to pick out an individual here. I'm not picking on him. I want to be too critical because Andre Russell is part of the reason why I said this team is a very strong team. But Andre Russell rolling this team, playing as a death bowler. I, I am not sure. I am not sure. I think Andre Russell rolling a West Indies team 
mainly should be coming and hit away the cricket ball at the back end of an innings and finish off games. And you can call on to him to bowl two or three overs depending on the situation. I don't believe Andre Russell should put in a situation where he's bowling four overs or had to bowl or have to bowl four overs. I don't think Andre Russell should put in that situation. Because Andre Russell for me, most times will go for runs. He will pick up wicket, but he will go for runs. So Andre Russell thing is like a 50-50 thing for me when it's come on to his bowling. And to have him there at the back end bowling to me, I think is a bit risky. Especially when you are asking him now to bowl all of four overs. And that is why I think in this West Indies team, I think you need another bowler. We're going that game with five bowlers. You know, I don't think you want to add Kyle Myers to that guy. Kyle Myers is not the best T20 bowler in the world. We know he can do his thing in test cricket and to a lesser extent limited overs cricket. But for T20 international, Kyle Myers is not the best T20 bowler going around. All right? He's not even a decent T20 bowler. I don't think so. So we're going that game with five bowlers. And when your five bowlers... Um, if one of your five bowlers don't get it right, or two of them don't get it right, you are in trouble. But if you are going to a game with five bowlers, you have to ensure that all these five bowlers are great, are good T20 international bowlers. And at this moment, I am not saying Andre Russell wasn't a good T20 international bowlers, but for me, I think Andre Russell passes best. And he should not be looked upon someone who to give you four overs in a T20 international. I definitely believe that. You know, Andre Russell's main role to me in a T20 international team, anywhere he's playing in the world, or for West Indies, his main job is to come in and hit away the cricket ball in the last part of the innings when we're batting. And we see the other day where Andre Russell coming and just face five deliveries. I think I want Andre Russell to face more delivery than that. And I'm wondering in that game, when we lost four wickets and we sent in Rutherford, would it be a better decision to send in Andre Russell? Rutherford there what make 29 or 17 deliveries. I am not saying Russell will come in and do bet much better than that because he still could come in and even face the 17 deliveries and, and don't even make 29 runs either. But we all know Andre Russell has the ability to face those 17 deliveries and probably make 50 runs. And that would have helped us out much better and would have probably made a better score. I am just saying, I'm just wondering and pondering here, but I don't believe I want, I want to have Andre Russell in my team batting at number 8 and coming to face 4, 5 or 6 deliveries. I believe that is a waste. And Jason Older position in this team has to be questioned. It's got to be questioned. In the last game, Jason Older made what, 18 or 5 deliveries. But that is not a consistent thing from Jason Older. That is not a consistent thing. And Jason Older now need to pull up his socks. Because when he's bowling, he can go for runs and he's very inconsistent. He bowled well in this game and in the next two games you get nothing from him. He's ordinary and Jason Ola job in this team is to be one of our economical bowler. He's supposed to be very dependable and at this moment it's hard to depend on Jason Ola. He's not dependable and his place in this team got to be in, in, in serious question. Definitely. And in the last game that's where they leave out Shemran Hetmeyer out of the team. I believe that was a very good decision because Shemran Hetmeyer is not performing well at the moment. He's terrible. He's out of form. So to leave him out of the team, that was quite a no-brainer. That was quite an easy decision to make. And I believe Shemran Hetmeyer is overrated when it comes on to West Indies international T20 team. Go back, check his stats. He's underrated. He don't have a high strike rate. He's averaging like what 19, 20, 21 summer there. Don't have a high strike rate. So he's overrated when he come out to West in this context. He do very well in IPL and CPL and probably some other leagues. But when it come out to West in this, Shemran Edmire has never been a brilliant player for West in this. So when we lose out on a Shemran Edmire not in West in this team, you basically don't lose much. 
And at this moment, I don't know if it's a dilemma, but West Indies probably don't know their best 11. They probably don't know their best 11. And in this game, I'm going to give them my 11 that I think should take the field, or what I want to take the field this morning in today's game to represent West Indies. So, King and Myers open for me. And Nicholas Puran bat at number 3, Shaiho bat at number 4. The captain obviously bat at number 5. The question I'm having, uh, the, the big thing though I'm having here a problem with is Rutherford coming at number 6 because I believe we are playing a batsman too much. I honestly believe that. And I believe Andre Russell should bat at number 6. And if Shepard come back, should bat at number 7. And then now, Rastan Chase will come in at 8, Gudekish Moti, Akil Hussein, and Alzari Joseph, if you're not arresting him. If you're arresting Alzari Joseph, then Ford get a game for me. I believe that is a much balanced squad and much better bowling unit as well. Because Rastan Chase, to me, can do a very good job in the middle overs there of keeping things very tight. So he will be a good addition to this team. Some people might question and say Rastan Chase is not a ball and you know he's not batting well. But I think in the context of this West Indies team, we need people who can bowl economical. We don't have too much of that happening at the moment. And if we can get Andrew, um, sorry about that, Rastan Chase to come in and bowl economical, that all goes well for West Indies because we have Budakish Moti doing a good job there, and if Rasta and Chase come and add to that, then that is better for us because we need bowlers who can bowl economical. I think if you look at the three previous one day international, there are bowlers in that unit who I think you know that they are not going to be economical. Um, Jason Ola is inconsistent at it. Um, Andre Russell, who had a very good first game, but we see what he come back with there in the next two games. Azari Joseph will pick up wickets, but he will also go for runs. There's also there are too many bowlers there where who have the ability to pick wickets, to take wickets, but they will go for runs. And that's going to be a problem for you because you don't want to be a team where you have the ability to make 230 runs, but you don't have the ability to defend it too as well. And we all know in limited overs cricket, especially T20 international, being economical is just as vital as taking wickets. And Rust and Chase can be a good addition to a bowling unit. So, but it will be interesting to see what 11 they use and, uh, and to represent West Indies in this game. Definitely interesting to see. So I'm definitely looking forward to this match. And as I said, I predict West Indies to win this series 4-1. I believe we will win today. We will win the next game unless there is win because I believe we're a good team. I believe we are better than this England team. Hence, we should go on and do our thing and win 4-1. So, thanks again for watching this video. I haven't done any in a while, but I feel like doing this one this morning. So, if you like my video, you can just leave a like, comment, share, subscribe. I'll be always grateful for that. Thank you very much. Until we talk again.